Gone? Okay. I'm so back. there we go. Hi, everybody. So this is Moss. I want to introduce him really quick because he's a dear friend of mine and someone very special who's also a band influencer and customer. But just a quick personal story. This is my, my first trip to India was in 2010, and I went with Moss Vidal. So this gentleman um, is who I went with. He's like, I'm going to pass this around. Here's some pictures of us rafting down the Ganga River outside of Rishikesh, and he's friends with all these real-life, like, yogis that live in caves. So I just thought we'd give you an interesting snapshot to, um, to Moss. But I studied Ayurveda with Kerala Ayurveda Academy in his... Um, studio in Los Angeles, and then I did uh, another yoga teacher training and Ayurveda teacher training with Moss. So he was really my introduction to Ayurveda, and he's certainly a pioneer when it comes to introducing yoga and Ayurveda to the West. Um, I'm going to let him say a little bit, but just a couple things I want you to know about him, and hopefully he can address it, is that He's very close with Yogananda. Oh, he was a devotee. He's a devotee, a loyal devotee of Yogananda. And if anyone saw the movie Awake, um, Moss is kind of like the moderator in it. And I'll send out a trailer video so you can see some of that. But really cool. He was actually a monk for living um, as a monk with Yogananda's community uh, for, I don't know, a while ago. And he'll hopefully tell us a little bit about that. Um, and... Two other quick, th one other quick thing. I saw on Facebook that um, he and his friend Himalaya did. A, they were just featured on The Bachelorette, the ABC television show, teaching yoga for. I just saw that. Okay, so that's <laughs> not. So I mean, it's just it's kind of cool. He lives in Ojai, California. He used to be in, in Los Angeles, but he's really grounded in Eastern teaching, but teaching in the West. It's such, so it's really he's doing some beautiful work in the world. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, yeah, he's a lot of fun. He's also been a Banyan customer for, since the beginning of time. Um, and so with that, I just want to say I'm really, really, really thrilled to introduce my friend Moss and just a wonderful yogi human being that's doing a lot for yoga and Ayurveda. And so Moss, if you wouldn't mind starting, um, could you tell us a little bit about your Ayurveda story and how you got introduced to yoga and Ayurveda? Yeah, sure. Nice to chat with you all. Um, my my basic connection to Ayurveda started um, in the er early 1990s. Uh, the same woman uh, that introduced me to yoga when I first moved to California. I'm originally from Miami, actually in Miami right now. Um, and when I came out to California after graduating from college, she introduced me both to yoga and to Ayurveda and to actually astrology all in the same year. And uh, it wasn't long after that that I got uh, involved with Yogananda's teachings because Yogananda has a very strong presence in California, as many of you know or may not know. And, um, and it was uh, very influential in my life. I, I you know, I did... Uh, in terms of the monastic path, I, I took brahmachari practices, which was the first step in moving in that direction. But then after about a few years, I decided that um, I had a lot to share with the world and, and, and be in the world. And so um, I, I'm a lay disciple of Yogananda's. And, um, and then I came across David Foley's teachings in 99. And that was it. Um, as soon as I met him and uh, got connected to his teachings, I told him, I said, I, I want to dedicate my life to yoga and Ayurveda. And I took up a uh, mentor, Gurukul study one-on-one -on -one with him for many, many years. And, um, and that uh, that changed my life. I mean, it was that was in 2000. I, I, I went to India for the first time. That was you know 16 years ago, and uh, he helped me to understand the greater Vedic tradition, yoga, Ayurveda, and Jyotish, the Vedic astrology side. And um, a year later, I decided to open Dancing Shiva, and 
that was in 2001. I met the owners of your company uh, at that same year, and uh, we had started placing orders. We start. I had the only uh, Ayurvedic um, apothecary there. We had a full store um, and a clinic. Uh, a couple of years later, once I started to do more clinical training. Um, then I added an Ayurveda clinic, which I had there for about nine, ten years. And then I was teaching yoga as well. I wore many hats. I did everything from cleaning to teaching yoga to doing kirtan to doing shiradharas to doing panchakarmas and bastis. And, um, and Aaron uh, took a course uh, with a school that ended up becoming a partnership with me there. Um, and so we offered Ayurvedic trainings as well there. And so, so running my own school, uh, became my own school for me. It's, it, it's what educated me over the last 16, 17 years. And, um, I'm grateful that I've been able to go out and, um, do something that at, at that time, very few people were doing. And now Ayurveda I remember saying this. I think Kevin was Kevin's one of the owners, wasn't yeah. that uh, his name? There's Kevin. Yeah. Hey, Moss. <laughs> this is Kevin. Hey, I'm here. Yeah. I, hey, how are you? It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it has been. Yeah. And I remember, I remember you and I had a brief conversation. Um, I forget it was at a conference or something. And and what I remember saying was that yoga is the doorway to Ayurveda. And I really felt strongly about it. And I've seen now um, Banyan's uh, connection and now linking more to the yoga community. Uh, I know many yoga teachers and practitioners that have begun to embrace uh, this yoga Ayurveda connection. And I have felt that way from the very beginning that Ayurveda without yoga will only go so far. Um, but if we link it to the yoga community, uh, the sky's the limit. And I'm so happy to see that you all have crossed over into that genre because the, the yoga, Ayurveda is a very useful science to, to enhancing a person's yoga practice. And, um, and that's, that's an easy sell when people realize that Ayurveda can help your yoga everybody wants to now embrace Ayurveda because it's natural, it's complementary. And um, so I'm grateful. I, I really appreciate what you all are doing. I think, um, I think um, all of the standards of, of, of Banyan are, are critical today. One of them is uh, the organic side. I think that's a, a, a component that's, that's huge. Um, I like the team spirited uh, component bringing the group together and um, and encouraging everybody to uh, work together, work as a team for the, the greater whole of not just the company, but as messengers of the tradition. You know, we're not going to be here long. We, we have a short term on the planet. But if we can keep Ayurveda going and keep disseminating the, the, the essence of this tradition, um, then we're in line with what the great ones have been doing for Ayurveda. Uh, and that's what David Frawley taught me. You know, he said, this is not your teaching. This is not my teaching. We're here as messengers. We're here to carry this tradition forward. And, and, and that's where my loyalty lies in, in, in Ayurveda, being loyal to the tradition and what it's done for, for me and, and for the world. So um, I could go on. I'm very long-winded. So... <laughs> That was really awesome, Moss, right? Yeah. Just, it's so nice to hear your story. And uh, there, I passed that picture around, but Fra David, uh, David Frawley and Moss are like uncle and nephew, and they're very close. And, and uh, I've gotten to be close with Frawley and Shamavi really through Moss, and, um, and it's a really special relationship. But Moss, I, I think it would be... Nice to hear what you're currently working on and any goals you have. And then we can end with um, if you have any favorite Banyan product um, that you use in your daily routine or offer to your – suggest to your clients, that would be cool to hear. Great. Yeah. Um, 
Well, my uh, three years ago, I lost the lease on my building, so I switched Dancing Shiva to operate as a nonprofit organization. Um, because uh, my view is that yoga is not a business, um, and I like to look at this as a service to humanity. And um, so, my interest right now is in propagating the unity of yoga and Ayurveda and encouraging people to practice yoga and to live Ayurveda. And so my focus is on, is on education, not just Ayurveda, but yoga and Ayurveda. I'm very specific to that. I've just written my first book, um, a very substantial book. Um, I think it's going to turn a lot of heads. Um, I, um, I, I feel like I'm a bit more of a renegade. Uh, I have a renegade perspective in, in how Ayurveda should be practiced uh, along with yoga. Um, David Foley uh, wrote a, a beautiful introduction to the book. Maya Tawari, who's also a very big Ayurveda proponent, has given a, a tremendous endorsement for it. And so for the next year or, or many years, I'll be... Uh, promoting that book. I'm working on a second book um, and I'm going to dedicate more work now to uh, philanthropy. I, I, I want to do more work to educate more people in uh, the spiritual side of yoga, the practical side of Ayurveda, and another um, aspect of this is to me the ecology. Um, um, I wrote a chapter in the book called Spiritual Ecology. Um, I'm very big on uh, organic farming um, and sustainable practices. Actually, I just looked at, a, uh, at an organic farm down here in Miami that my father's been trying to encourage me to buy, uh, to do something with. Um, I just met with a woman named Vandana Shiva, who's, who's probably the biggest voice in, in ecology and non-GMO non and organic farming in India. Um, and she's also in, in endorsing my book and really getting people to look at life as um, a divine relationship, that we're not here to save the planet, but more so we're, we're here to have a relationship with this planet and that this planet is spiritual, that God is in nature and, and we have to encourage people to live their spirituality and not just practice it in a boxed room. And, um, and Ayurveda is a wonderful, it teaches us how to have that relationship with nature, to have more compassionate uh, and um, have concerns for the animals. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm launching a big campaign right now with an organization I'm spearheading. It's called uh, Farm Sanctuary. And they are farms that are um, rescuing farm animals, cows, goats, horses, pigs, and these animals are being rescued from being slaughtered, and um, we're, we're working with them now to bring more awareness to their farms that they have in different parts of the country, and promote a vegetarian lifestyle, and, um, and, and so tie all of this in, that yoga, Ayurveda, ecology, astrology is a lifestyle. And it's a relationship that we have with the planet and the sun and the moon. And, um, and so here I am, and I'm very grateful that, that, that Aaron's a, a, a part of Banyan because I remember when she was struggling for years to make her decision to follow her dharma. And I said, just wait, be patient, it will come, be consistent. And, and now she's done it, and look at how many people she's changing in her life and, and, and sharing the message. And, and so I think if we, if we follow our inner bliss and follow our, our, our heart, um, it'll bring us to do something that we love. And when we do something that we love, it's not work. It's, 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 we're serving each other, and we're serving nature, and we're, and we're helping um, the spread of these traditions to grow throughout the world. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you all are doing these things, chanting the Gayatri Mantra. Beautiful. Um, 
and and I'm humbled to be a part of it. I just, uh, I it's great to see these traditions continue to grow. Um, now over the last 15 years, uh, so much it's incredible what's happening, not just here. But even in Asia, I can tell you, I spend a lot of time in Asia. This year alone, I was in China three times teaching, and they're going crazy for Ayurveda. They, they're so hungry, they want me to move there and teach at multiple centers, offer trainings there. They're looking for teachers. They're, they're interested in, in, in buying the products. It's hard for them to have access to, to buying products because the shipping costs are so high coming from the states. Um, so I've had to try and find uh, networks and websites that they can buy from. So it's a global thing. It's enormous right now. And just so that you know, I know Aaron probably shared this too, uh, with you. A yogi uh, in India has now developed the largest Ayurveda company in the world, Patanjali Ayurveda. They're a billion dollar company. And so we're at the we're a part of a wave that's that's sweeping across the world, um, and it's a very special time for us to be a part of this work and sharing this work together. And um, so I'm humbled and and grateful. Any, uh, Aaron, I'm going to turn it back to you because I, I I know we're on a timeline here, and you have some other things. Well, Moss, I think I just want to thank you for today. Um, if you just want to briefly mention your favorite Banyan product, if you have one, and that you want to share. And if not, no problem. We can wrap up here. Um, I, you know, I, I, I travel a lot these days, and I either I, I always like to travel. Trifla, as you know, is 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 a uh, is a is probably your most biggest seller. Um, I like to travel with the tablets because when you travel a lot, your vata, uh, the, the, the digestion gets thrown off. And, and I'm a firm believer that, um, and this has come up at a number of Ayurveda conferences, if you're going to take one thing a little bit of every day, um, it's trifla because um, it has longevity benefits. Uh, the digestion is really the most important aspect of our systemic function, and um, the other um, the other product I like is um, you know there are so many that that I've taken over the years, and I remember when the the, the product line at Banyan was just like six to eight products. So the catalog has gotten so big now, it, it's like it's like reading a magazine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, but I, I really like Rasayana products. I'm I'm really big on on carrying some sort of a Rasayana. I've been ordering more of the Chavon Prash. Um, simple, easy. It tastes good. I like Shatavari, uh, Ashwagandha, um, and and I like to use those products because. Today, I think people need more Rasayana than anything else. If you don't know what that means, it's sort of products that restore a person's energy level and um, sort of stress combatant type herbs that, that help counter the world stress that we have today. Thank you, Moss. That was awesome. Um, I'll yeah. just say, I'll end with, he's writing a book, and we've agreed that we will do a social media partnership to give away one of his autographed books in September, and he's also going to write, I'd love to see you write a, a blog article on the ecology piece that you mentioned. That's really interesting. So we, maybe we can lift something from your book. But with that, Moss, just so much gratitude for who you are, for being such a loyal customer for so many years, and what you're doing in the world. So snaps to Moss. <laughs> Thank you, Moss, for joining us. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.